What's up, everybody? Zach Every here. Today, we're going to be talking about getting started in Studio One with your Persona Studio interface. Now, this guide is going to apply to more than just Persona interfaces, but for our purposes today, we'll be using this beautiful Persona Studio 26C. If you already know how to set up your audio interface, just go ahead and click this time code and we'll jump straight to the Studio One portion of this video. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right, so let's get into setup here with the interface. We have our Personas 26C here. This is an awesome little two input interface, has four outs in the back along with our headphone here. And if I didn't already have my 1824 here as my daily driver, you can bet that I'd be using this as my interface every day. These things are sturdy and they just work great. It's serious plug and play action with these guys. So let's get straight into setup here. If you look here on the back of the interface on the left hand side, there is a USB-C port. And what that is, that's gonna be our power as well as our connection to our computer. So when you get this in the mail, it's gonna come with either a USB-C to USB-A cable or a USB-C to USB-C cable. And depending on your computer, you will use either one of those cables. If you have a newer computer, like a new MacBook Pro or something like that, you might be using your C to C cable. But for our purposes today, we're gonna be using the C to A cable. So to get this guy plugged in, all you need to do is take that cable, that power cable, and you're gonna plug the USB-C end here into the interface. And then you're gonna plug the other end into your PC or Mac. Uh, I have a little cable extension going into my desktop right here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And of course, the first time we try to plug something in with USB, it never works. And so then we try again and bam, that's like the law of USB. And we can see now that we, our light is on, we're powered and we're good to go. Now, if you're trying to set up a microphone with your Studio 26 or 24C, you're going to be using what's called an XLR cable to plug in your interface and your microphone. So what we have here is just a basic balanced XLR cable. And all I need to do to plug in my microphone here is I'm going to take the male end of our cable. It plugs straight into the Studio 26C here. I'm gonna put it in channel one there. Make sure you have the screw on the XLR cable on top. And then the other end of this is gonna to go to my microphone. Now I'm not gonna plug it in right now because I'm already recording my microphone on my other interface, but you get the point. Take this, line it up with the pins on your microphone and plug that in. It's important to note that some microphones like condenser microphones require what we call phantom power and if your microphone requires power all you need to do is press the little 48 volts button right here and that will run phantom power straight to your microphone and you'll be good to go all right and from this point on in our video i'm actually going to be using the 26c for all of our audio purposes you can see i've plugged in a microphone here and one of the great things about these personas interfaces is you can see right on the screen here it has monitoring for all of your audio and leveling for all of your audio so you can see if you're clipping right now we're in the green so we're good it if you wanted to maybe turn up the volume or down the volume on your microphone, all you have to do is adjust the knob depending on which channel it is here, turn one or two. Awesome. And of course, if you have headphones plugged in the back like I do here, headphone jack is right here, everybody. Uh, then all you need to do to turn your headphones up is adjust the headphone knob, which is conveniently marked there. Now that we have everything set up, we're going to be good to go ahead and record in Studio One. So let's switch over to Studio One. Here we are in our Personas Studio One startup page. Now, there are a lot of features that we can go over in Studio One, uh, but I am going to kind of avoid those for now. If you want to delve deeper into the news feed, the demos and tutorials, the, the SoundCloud link, you can check that out. But today we're just going to be focused on getting started. Now, mine's going to look a little different because I already have some projects and songs and things over here, uh, but it should look pretty darn similar. So to get started, all we need to do is click on create a new song and let's go ahead and click on that boom and there are all these great little options uh like presets for songs but for today we're just going to go for an empty song so i'm going to go ahead and double click that awesome and this is what studio one looks like on first startup it's an absolutely blank template for you to do whatever you want with it and so to get started the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to press the t key and when we press the T key, that prompts us to add 
a new track in our mix. So uh, I'm going to name this one Voice One. And this is going to be our first microphone track ever. And you can select the input from your interface. Input L here is going to be your input one on a two channel interface. And the right is going to be your input two. Awesome. And we are going to make that a mono input. And we're going to hit OK. And we've created our first track. Pretty sweet. Now, what we need to do from there, if we want to record this track, we need to hit the record arm button here. It's this little circle right here. And we can click that. Boom. And now we have our audio going. Now, I'm going to untick this monitor box here so you only hear me one time. And from there, you should be good to go. If you notice that you got this far but you're still not hearing anything, uh, feel free to check out the Studio One options. On Windows, you go to Studio One up here and then down to Options. And make sure that you have your right audio device selected. So in our case here, it's our Studio USB. And then we want to make sure our sample rate is 441K, which is the sample rate for our interface here. And that I just by default use 512 samples. From there, you should be good to go. In fact, we can go ahead and press the record button. Boom. And that's going to record all of my audio. We can go ahead and check, see how that worked. Some things you can do at any time with your audio. If you click on it here, you can click and drag it around. Uh, if you find the edge of it here, you get this little sign and you can click and shorten it like this. Um, and also you can click and bring down or up the gain on your track. All these tools are super handy and super easy to use also. If you wanna delete an item of audio, all you need to do is click it and then hit your delete key and boom, it's gone. And if you accidentally deleted it and you wanna get it back, just press Control Z to undo, or if you're on Mac, Command Z, and you have it back. Now, once you have your audio recorded, the next thing you might want to do is add some effects to your audio. Personas, built into Studio One, has put just a ton of effects for you to use right out of the box. Now, to add effects to our mix, all we need to do is either click here on the Mix tab, and that'll bring up our mix window, or you can simply press F3. And now we get to see our mix window. Now at the mix window, we can do all sorts of stuff. We can adjust the volume on our track, uh, but we can also add effects. And if we look up here on the inserts area, if we hit plus, we then get to see the effects window. Now, it should be said in Studio One Prime and Studio One Artist, you can't actually use your own effects. So for example, I have all of these effects from Neural DSP, JST, Isotope, uh, Selimony, Get Good Drums, all of that fun stuff. We wouldn't be able to use that in Studio One Prime or Studio One Artist, but in Studio One Pro, that's not an issue. Uh, but even with that said, in Studio One Artist and Studio One Prime, Personas gives you a ton of effects right out of the box, and they are seriously great, guys. Uh, so if we hit the Personas tab here, we can see all these effects going on over here, and there are a ton of them, and they're all great. Uh, for example, one of my favorites is the Pro EQ. Now, if you're recording vocals, an EQ uh, is a great tool sometimes, and this Pro EQ is particularly awesome because if I click right here, and I just play our audio and I remember we're uh and remember you're not gonna be able to hear it because OBS is being weird, but we can see the audio in real time going on here in the EQ. This is super useful if you have any pesky frequencies that you're trying to get rid of. Uh, this EQ is also super easy to use. You want to use a high pass filter? Great. Just hit that, lower that gain change that frequency and in three clicks you have a high pass filter this pro eq is one of the best stock eqs i've ever seen in a daw thank you personas for this one now like i said there are tons of effects for you to explore and mess with and all of those effects also have great little presets so if you're in an effect if you see where it says default up here just click that drop down box and i think we want like a vocal preset so mail vox 2 and we'll click on that and it automatically gives us a great EQ preset and we're going to be sounding great right out of the box with little to no tweaking. A couple other features we can get from our mix window here is if we see this blue line that is our pan and we see right here it says C. 
uh, that means that our audio is in the center. If I drag this to the right, then our audio only plays out of the right. And if I drag this to the left, then our audio would only play out of the left. But we are going to keep that in C. I'm just going to type that right there. Boom. And keep our audio in the center of the mix. And like I stated before, uh, we have our fader here, which adjusts the volume of our track. Now, if you've made it this far, then you've recorded your audio. Maybe you've added a little bit of effects and you're good to go. You're ready to export your audio so that you can share it with the world. This is very easy to do on Studio One. I'm going to show you how to export our audio. So there are two ways, essentially, that we can export our audio. The first way is kind of a more complicated way. Uh, every song has a start marker and an end marker, uh, and we can view them by clicking on the marker button right here and we see it right there we can just zoom out and grab the end marker and put it there uh, and then when we go to export let's zoom back in here then when we go to export we go up here to song we go down to uh, export mix down and we would click uh, between start and end marker and we can see that it has the right time there it says 7.273 seconds and we would be good to go. You select your destination and you name it here. However, I think an even easier way to do it is just find up here where the numbers are. You'll see you get this little pen, click and drag that. That creates a loop. Now, if you play it, it's not gonna loop unless you hit the loop button down here. But if I go back here to song, export mix down, and I hit between loop, we see that we have that same audio region ready to go. You set the destination, you name it, you hit OK, and you are good to go. And that is really it for your like first day with Studio One. If you're just looking to record just maybe some vocals for some narration or some very simple musical ideas like one instrument, two instruments, maybe some vocals, then this is really the bare bones way to get ready to go. Now, I'm going to be posting some more videos going a little bit more in depth with Studio One with some of the more awesome things you can do with it than just the, the basic package. But if you do these couple things and follow along, you should be good to go. Well, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions about getting started with your Persona Studio interface or Studio One in general, please just post it in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more music tech content, Persona Studio One content, or just anything music in general, please let me know in the comments and hit that like button and subscribe, please, so I know that you guys want to see more stuff coming from this channel. I would love to make more videos and I'm having a great time doing it right now but that's gonna do it for this time i'll see you in the next video see you later